Chairwoman, we yes. just appreciate you uh, being here. I want to just jump right in here, right? So let's let's cover the basics of. Uh, it was just, I, I told you this. It was so neat to walk into the foyer of your building and to see the picture of President Biden and uh, Vice President Harris and you right there. Some people may not know what the XM Bank does, the Export Import Bank does, and this is just a really big deal. So could you tell us about your institution that you lead, uh, you know, as chair and president of the XM Bank. No, thank you very much, Spencer. You know, as I look around and, and I think some, some of my friends have left and some of them are coming, I just want to say that I have been uh, someone who has been a part of the Joint Center family uh, since my days in the Clinton administration. So just to be here today, to be with Spencer, uh, who I can just tell you, um, Spencer, I have to take just a moment to say, without Spencer and the Black Talent Initiative, uh, you know, David uh, Clooney and, and, and so many others of you who represent organizations, you really help continue to put the, uh, what do they say, the, the wind underneath our wings as we were going through the confirmation process. And to have that kind of support, Spencer, you know, of the many times that I call you day or night, you was always available and just helping us to move forward uh, in this. And one of the reasons why Spencer was so adamant, I think, in the, in the initiative was because when you get people and friends like Paul Thornell and, and so many others on your board who is really advocating for blacks, women, and men, and people of color to participate at the highest level of our United States government, meaning abiding appointee, but more importantly, to be a part of the economic team of the president. And so when we were uh, being uh, announced, there were several of us that uh, Spencer was working with. And uh, I would tell you, Spencer, we are all still working together. And some of them I think you heard from already. Uh, so we really are very excited because in this administration, we have a president, President Biden and Vice President Harris, who has made it very, very clear that the way that we, with so many geopolitical events taking shape throughout the world, that we are really looking at how is economic security playing with our, our uh, national security, and how is the national security combining with our economic security. And so to be uh, in an organization which is 88 years old, and as Spencer said, I am the first black female I'm the first uh, black person and the second woman only in 88 years to lead this institution. And it would not be possible without your support. The Export Credit uh, Agency, <laughs> thank you. We call it uh, an ECA, uh, is America's only export credit agency that is principally there to be about supporting our American businesses as they are trying to compete and win uh, deals and contracts around the world, and then for us to, to definitely be su supporting their facilitation of jobs uh, here in the United States. And so Export Credit uh, is an agency, uh, little known, uh, that uh, provides uh, everything from uh, direct loans to working capital for small business, for insurance and, and, and uh, guarantees so that our businesses can compete and win. And all of it is backed up by the United States uh, government. And so being an agency that represents um, uh, a federal agency that participates with, with large, medium, and small businesses, uh, as well as all sectors and all sizes, we're there to help provide the, the, the financing to be a, to be a part of, of, the, of the solution of the financing when they're trying to do business around the world. Mm -hmm. So we talk about black-owned businesses and exporting. You know, what's the current state of play? You know, often we hear about the need for greater access to capital in terms of uh, black businesses. You know, do you agree that that's the case for exporters? And why is this? And why are exports important in terms of black businesses? Well, first of all, it's, it's exceptionally uh, important for black businesses, and we are. Um, one thing about XM Bank, it is a congressionally mandated institution, and we were reauthorized back in 2019 
And in that reauthorization, Congress placed on us several uh, additional uh, areas, mandates that they wanted us to focus on. It was about how do we make more financing available in Sub-Saharan Africa? How do we make more available uh, uh, financing available in transformational export areas, such as the, the, the semiconductors, the AI, the quantum computing, all the new tech things that you're hearing about? How do we also make more financing available in the renewable and energy storage and energy efficiency space? Mm -hmm. But more importantly, they, re they upped our percentage of how they wanted us to work within the women and minority uh, community of, of small and, and small business. And so we're not just saying women and minority. I mean, we have to drill down. We have to be about LGBTQ owners of, with people with disabilities, people in rural communities. We have to really talk about how we can spread out to tell our story that this little known agency is, is there and not just for big business, but for everyone. And so in so doing, you find out one of the key things that we all know, and Spencer, you talk about it all the time at the Joint Center, and is about access to capital. If you're trying to access an international market and you want to access uh, buyers or you want to export your, your um, goods, and, goods and services outside of the United States, we are standing there with you. We can stand there with you to help you unlock that capital to be able to do business so that we can make sure that you are, as I say, you, your, your business is, is secure, the products and services that you're sending abroad, and also making sure you get paid on what it is that you're trying to do. Because that's one of the things that I think uh, is fearful, especially in a lot of small businesses. Uh, and we are an agency that has only uh, located in just 12 uh, regions around the United States. And so that's why we have to work very closely with the Small Business Administration. We work very closely with the Department of Commerce. You're going to hear from my, my, my good colleague uh, and friend, uh, Don Graves, soon. Because the Department of, Department of Commerce has over 3,000 plus foreign commercial service officers around the world. The Department of State has over 1,300 uh, economic officers located in our embassies and around the world. So when you take that 5,000 plus individuals, those are the ones that we want to work alongside of you when you're thinking about um, exporting or doing business abroad because they can be, they have just been great ambassadors for us and we're actually looking for all of you to also be ambassadors for us too. Mm -hmm. um, and, and on that, in terms of the importance of being ambassadors, um, a very large percentage of black businesses are, let's say, barber shops, beauty salons, and uh, janitorial supplies, landscaping, right? Uh, and unfortunately, we're in some industries where the revenues are not as high, and with exports, mm -hmm. revenues are much higher than yes. you know many other mm -hmm. uh, industries here. So if you talk about you know, partnerships yes. with diaspora communities uh, here. New stakeholders, small and large, you know, HBCUs uh, here. What opportunities do you see in terms of these types of partnerships and kind of public-private partnerships for folks who are in our audience yeah. today to be involved with, with you? Well, you know, the uh, thing that is so significant, Spencer, is that we have some great businesses and uh, in America that's in all kinds of sectors and all kinds of sizes. And it, it's really, we like to say nothing's too big and nothing's too small. Mm -hmm. Because people also forget that it is also services that can be exported that we can also play a role in uh, when someone is trying to finance that type of work. Uh, we have a new initiative called Make More in America. One of the things about Make More in America program that we've just instituted is how we can help to shore up the supply chain. We all saw what was happening uh, with COVID and how uh, it, it, we realized uh, over the years that with an underinvestment in the manufacturing sector, we've lost a lot of jobs, we've lost the ability to be competitive. One of the things that the president asked all the agencies when he came in was to do a review to say, where can, uh, what, what do you have traditionally in your toolkit that can help an American business grow? Uh, where can you have, uh, and, um, where, what do you have that we're doing? So we looked at our loan guarantees, we looked at our insurance products, we looked at our direct loans and our working capital to say we can support a business if they're trying to grow 
domestically here in the United States, as they are here in the United States, but it always has to have an export nexus. And so we ask you to think about XM when you are uh, considering marketing yourselves to a foreign, uh, foreign buyer. And so when you talk about healthcare, all of those things, I mean healthcare, we've got some great minority businesses in, in, the, health, in the healthcare space. We've got great minority businesses who are looking at all kinds of areas. It doesn't just have to be high tech or the big business like aviation. It can be whatever you can, I think it's, it's as they say, can you imagine it? And you can get an order. If you can get an order of something that you're doing here in the United States to go abroad, we should be a place that you should be thinking about coming to. We do one-on-one -on -one consultations. We are all the time, we have an, a, an amazing group of individuals who work in our minority and women um, uh, sector that is a part of what we call our office of small business. And so do please, you know, as they say, it's, it's not that you have to have the full formed idea. We are partnering, and going to Spencer's question, we are trying to partner with more non-traditional partners, not just the chambers of commerce and, and the trade associations, but we're looking for all kinds of organizations that if you are standing up initiatives or programs, or you, you're needing us to come and advise on how a business can grow uh, their exports, uh, we, we can stand prepared to, to participate in those kinds of programs. We did, during COVID, we did over 600 webinars. Uh, and we co-hosted or hosted with organizations, universities. We just signed an agreement with the Historically Hispanic College. We're working to finalize one with the Historically Black College. We're really looking across the board. And youth entrepreneurship is exceptionally important, uh, especially in so many areas. People have great ideas. You know, we do a significant, as you might imagine, you know, we are export credit agency, we're a bank, we have to do all of our due diligence. But at the end of the day, it is about working with, with organizations, your economic development teams in, the, in your city, your state, or your county, working with the international trade office within your city, state, or county. And that's why we have re-upped uh, our relationships with governors and mayors and county executives uh, also, because we think that that's a great place because they're right there on the ground, it's local, and with the partnerships that they have with us in collaboration with Small Business and Commerce and XM Bank, it gives you an opportunity to really find out what you need to do in order to use the types of transactions, the types of um, financing tools that we have. So, so Madam Chair, we're about out of time, but if you could just give us a, a brief uh, comment on the partnership for global infrastructure and investment of uh, President Biden, what it means to underserved uh, businesses and communities. Yeah, absolutely, it's, it's another, way that we are extending the work that we're doing in all types of sectors and new sectors that we might not have traditionally been involved in. President Biden with his G7 colleagues announced uh, early in the year the Partnership for Global Investments and uh, in Infrastructure. And what that, that partnership did was he brought the G7 countries together. They looked at the four pillars of whether it was digital connectivity, healthcare, uh, I'm sorry, digital, yeah, digital uh, connectivity, healthcare and health services, gender, as well as renewables. Those are spaces that minority and black businesses have been playing in for years and for decades. And so I think I see, we see some different opportunities uh, whereby America has, to, has a goal of about $200 billion of that commitment that the president did. And we are really looking for as many uh, types of entities that want to um, work in that space and entities that want to use XM Bank. So when you think about us um, and, and what you're trying to do when you're trying to expand outside of the United States to grow your businesses, a, we have seen that minority businesses and women-owned businesses and small businesses that export are more resilient. They have probably, a, they have a higher uh, a capacity of revenue. We've also seen that they have the ability to uh, adapt to, to change. We all saw what happened uh, uh, in COVID. But one of the things that we really all should be aware of is that now over 90% of the consumer marketplace is not in the United States anymore. It is abroad. So that's why having the minority business, the black businesses, who, and the women-owned businesses who have a good product or a good service, and you want to export that, 
definitely be thinking about XM, and we look forward to being able to work with any and all of you. We want to be the bank of everyone, not just the bank of big business. We want to be the bank, bank of everyone because one of the things that President Biden is all about is how do we create an economy for everyone. And that is why it's important to be here at the Joint Center today to keep telling that message and asking you for your help and asking you to come to XM if you have services or products that you need financing that you traditionally probably cannot get from the traditional sources. And that's where XM comes into play. Chairwoman Lewis, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.